Jonathan Tabert, and I am the founding artistic director of the Palmetto City Ballet. We originated in 2015. We started by having a multi-genre collaboration um, fitting with the story of creation. And we had an original score and a live chamber orchestra to accompany the performance. And it really was a combination of all of the ideas that I that I find important in creating and producing work. I see it as sort of an incubator of ideas, if you will, that really blossom into dance works. Palmetto City Ballet really is a classical ballet company, but the way we create and the, the products we produce are in my opinion kind of a, a skew from classicism. I am a classicist at heart. So when, when I create, I use that format as an inspiration, but how we produce I, feels a little different. The past seven years have kind of been like a whirlwind, but I'm very proud of what we've accomplished with the company and how true to our mission we've been. We've worked with national selling children's authors. We've commissioned numerous original scores, uh, premiered ballets with live chamber orchestra. So it's really been a culmination of many genres and many artistic voices that is amazing to inspire me and my own personal choreographic voice.
always been of the mind that collaboration creates the best product. And I'm very proud that that's at the core of what we do at Palmetto City Ballet. As a former dancer myself, I would definitely say one of my favorite collaborators are my dancers. Natasha Nast has been with the company for four seasons. She is a very lighthearted and sweet individual that is a pleasure to have in the studio. And on top of that, she is a powerhouse dancer. The way she takes command of the stage when she's performing is really incredible and she brings that energy and passion into her re rehearsal process as well. My name is Natasha Nast. I forgot what I was supposed to say. That's great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Natasha Nast. I joined the company in 2017 and this is my fourth season. My experience with Palmetto City Ballet has been amazing. I have never danced with a group so welcoming and hardworking and funny um, in my life, that's for sure. I definitely had a, a different start with the company, I think. A dancer that used to dance with the company got injured in a tech rehearsal one night, and that night I got a call, um, and I was asked to learn the ballet the next morning at 8 a.m in an hour and perform that weekend. And so I did. And then about a week or two later, I got a call and was asked to join as a guest artist for the next production. And the first day of rehearsals, I was then asked to join the company full time. So um, it was definitely a bit of a lucky experience. I felt like I was in the right place at the right time and I really lucked out to be there. And it makes dancing here now four years later just as special and just as lucky and I'm just very grateful to be here. So, Sarah Bowden has been with the company for four seasons. She is a great team player, highly malleable, and really easy to work with in the studio. My name is Sarah Bowden. I'm the company dancer with Palmetto City Ballet, and this is my fourth season. When I'm not dancing or teaching dance or teaching yoga, you can find me hanging out with my border collie around Charleston. Victoria Bevel is new to the company this year. She is a Charleston native and this is her first company position. She has been a joy to work with and due to the fact that we are a small company, you know, sometimes finding the right dynamics with the dancers is, um, is, is hard and she really has just fit right into the PCB family so seamlessly. I'm Victoria Bevel. I'm a company dancer with Palmetto City Ballet. This is my first season with the company. Outside of dancing, I do college online with the University of Florida. I love animals and I'm from Charleston. Amanda Evans has been with the company for three seasons. She is not only a, a talented dancer and an extremely hard worker, but she has such a natural personality that is so enjoyable and easy to work with. My name is Amanda Evans. I'm a dancer with Palmetto City Ballet. This is my third season with the company. Outside of rehearsal, you can often find me in a yoga studio or on a patio around Charleston. Having a personality like hers in the studio makes a hard day's work a whole lot easier.
Sarah Walborn, affectionately known as Wally to the entire company, has been dancing with us for three years. She is really a force in the studio and enjoys diving deep into the characters that she's portraying. Something particularly interesting that comes to my mind is when she originated the role of Lavinia Fisher. We did a series of stories that were based on old Charleston ghost stories. How she embodies a character is quite impeccable. From her facial gestures to the way she twiddled with her hair on stage and frizzed it out to, to really capture the, the essence of this character was quite incredible. My name is Sarah Walborn, also known as Wally to my Palmetto City Valley family. I've been with the company since 2018. I love working with Palmetto City Valley, mostly for the creative process that we do. When I was younger, I couldn't really appreciate the work behind um, dancing, and I just wanted to be on stage and perform, not put in any work. And with Palmetto City Valley, the process of creating a piece, especially the inspiration that John has between the music and the dancers is a really, really unique a part of the experience. And getting to come into this studio every day and have a conversation about what is our motivation for today in this step is something that is one of my very favorite things to do every day. second season with the company. She has such a natural and beautiful movement quality as well as being extraordinarily reliable. Everyone can definitely look to her to, to figure something out or to remember something and she often has the answers to everyone's questions. My name is Tia Sandman. I am a company dancer with Palmetto City Ballet. I'm currently in my second season. I am finishing off my degree in environmental biology from the University of Utah this summer, and I'm hoping to go into conservation. Crystal Wellman is an original company member to Palmetto City Ballet, has been here since the beginning. Working with Crystal in the studio is very collaborative. She's a choreographer herself, so I think that enhances how she rehearses and how she creates within the studio. So it's something that I personally uh, enjoy very much when I'm working with her. I'm Crystal Wellman. I am a founding member of Palmetto City Ballet here in Charleston, South Carolina. I started choreographing pretty early on in my career. It's something that I've always really enjoyed doing. I love, love, love the creative process. I love working with other dancers and to see what we can create together. It's an opportunity for us to do more shows it's an opportunity for me to get to be on the other side of things, which ultimately I think that's probably where I'm gonna head in my later life. I hope that everyone in the community thinks it enriches their experience and their opportunity to see live art.
on, on, the, on the first catch on stage left, yum, bum, boop, bum, 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 go right away. Yeah. Don't hang out with her at all. Just let me kind of do the steps for myself. Because I want to be able to, like, you, you should be stopped and then I slide into you. You know what I mean? You should what? You should stop for, and then I should be able to slide into you. On the second right side. Now. The first side is happening because you get there sooner. Yeah. Andres Nera is also a founding company member, and he was cast as Adam in our opening program of creation. He is a seasoned performer, and the stage really is his playground. I'm Andres Nera. I'm a founding member here at Palmero City Ballet. I've been with the company for seven seasons, believe it or not. Um, I enjoy dancing with John Tuppert very much. He's the director here. I've been uh, in the country for many, many years. I've danced with several different companies. And uh, I first got my education back in my home country of Colombia. Charleston is a very beautiful place to live. We are surrounded by water. We are surrounded by history. Um, there's beautiful architecture, food, wine. It's really a dream come true to be able to live in a place where you get to enjoy all those luxuries. I would absolutely love for Charleston to become a mecca of dance in the Southeast. Drawing nuances out of the dancers, whether it's artistically or technically, is probably the most exciting and inspiring part of the creative process. With Palmetto City Ballet, it's a very small, tight-knit group of dancers uh, working with John as well. In other company experiences, there's double or even sometimes triple the amount of dancers in the studio at the time, and it's uh, easy to be overlooked and kind of in a sea of a lot of people, whereas with Palmetto City Ballet, we each as dancers get to shine and be featured and working in a smaller intimate setting is harder because there's less dancers. You're uh, responsible for more information and there's a lot of weight that is carried on your shoulders. Working at Palmetto City Ballet is different from some of my other professional jobs in the sense that it is a much smaller, tight-knit group of people. You really get to know your coworkers, you really get to know the choreographer, and again, it's just like having one big family. I consider myself extremely lucky to have grown up in the town of Dayton, Ohio, when two extraordinarily inspiring women were leading the way in regional dance in America. Josephine Schwartz of Dayton Ballet and Geraldine Blunden of Dayton Contemporary Dance Company were really icons of dance in the Dayton arts community. At the age of six, I was cast as Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer in Stuart Sebastian's Night Before Christmas. I was completely enamored with the professional dancers and knew right then and there that ballet was going to be my life. Since that day, I can't imagine myself doing anything else. Teaching and choreographing are definitely equal passions in my life. So being an instructor at the Palmetto City Ballet School is 
incredibly fulfilling. The dedication it takes to acquire an ounce of skill in ballet is tremendous. So seeing these students working their hardest to achieve that goal is awe-inspiring. Uh, when I was little, my mother read me a book called The First Noel, and it was about Noel the ballerina. She was a little Christmas tree for uh, a holiday piece, and the moral of the story was the fact that every little part counts, and I absolutely love the idea of that. And so I asked my mom if I could dance, and she put me into some dance lessons, and I loved it ever since. <laughs> I'm very grateful for having dance as my career. It is uh, an outlet and therapy in a sense, coming into the studio every day religiously, taking class in the morning, warming your body up in a very comfortable and known way of doing it. And then being able to kind of release energy with movement, in interesting choreography, listening to beautiful music all the time, using your brain mathematically to count music, and also commitment, time management, all of the things that go into what you learn while dancing. I also love to put it back into my teaching and teach younger generations exactly why it is so beautiful what we learn and what we do and it's not a just it's not just about the steps it's about everything else that's involved with dance and what comes with it working with palmetto city ballet has been different in that just the the dancers and artistic staff here are so welcoming and I've never been in a place where people genuinely want you to succeed that much. <laughs> I had a ballet teacher in elementary and middle school um, that was very passionate about ballet and, and I didn't really know much about it at the time, but around 11 or 12 years old, she introduced ballet variations and pas de deux to me and there were things that I didn't really know existed um, and I got very into it. I, you know, looked, watched videos online for hours and became a huge ballet nerd and from then all I wanted was to do ballet. I knew I always wanted to be a dancer. You know, from when I started dancing I was two, but I knew I wanted to be a ballet dancer around 12. And that was the goal. It was just make it. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Nancy Galante. What I like best about teaching here is working with the students. They are so kind to one another and so driven. And it reminds me a little bit of myself when I was their age. Um, and just like in the company, they are so encouraging of one another and genuinely want each other to succeed. And as a teacher, it's something that's very cool to see. At Palmetto City Ballet School, I teach middle school, ballet technique class, and also the high schoolers point class. I really enjoy working with Palmetto City Valley School's level five group of dancers. They are now in a place in their technique where they get to push even further the envelope and really work on their artistry. And it's not just about the steps anymore, but it's truly about the passion and feelings that come out of their dancing and show who they are as humans and dancers and truly artists. When I was younger, I didn't really understand some of the things that were being asked of me in regards to the amount of classes having to be taken 
in order to perform, rehearsals that make up a lot of work to put on a performance quality that is a good quality. And now being in the profession and having it uh, as my career really shows me looking back on it truly how important it was to put forth that work. You don't just get handed something for free. It's a lot of life lessons that come with training and I really, that's a really big part of what I share with my students. And I try to get them to understand as much as they can for their age. It's really all worth it in the end if you can trust me and trust the work behind what we're asking them to do. I knew from such a young age that I wanted to be a ballet dancer. I made the decision around eight years old and I never looked back. I mean, you don't really get to pick sometimes what you love in life and for me, ballet is the thing that picked me. Growing up, I was always one of the shortest dancers. Well, still one of the shortest dancers. Um, I didn't really grow past the age of 12. And that has its limitations. People want a certain aesthetic for ballet. I do think that we are moving past that and through that. And I've always just tried to be an advocate for people that look all different ways to be able to dance and to perform and do what they love. Along with dancing for the company, I also teach in the school. Um, I have for the past six years. I mean, I love working with children. I love being part of their growth, part of their learning, part of their future. It's really an honor, and I learn so much. Like I correct my own dancing, and I'm inspired by working with the kids in the school. Much like the professional company, the school um, has a warm family environment. We not only challenge the children and want to push them to get better, we also want to nurture them as human beings. Ultimately, the old way of teaching ballet where there was a lot of bullying and a lot of putting down to students, which I experienced growing up, not from all of my teachers, but from some, I hope is a thing of the past. I hope we now begin to bring up children and respect them and know that they don't all learn at the same rate or the same style. I hope that we are part of the change. Like any cogent director with, say, four or five weeks to mount a show, I, of course, rely on the dancers' strengths. But I also like to push them to places that they don't think they can go or don't usually see themselves going. Something I love about the creative process. Because I was gonna say my favorite part is just the part where you hit that sweet spot. You know, you've learned the choreography, you're out of that stage of confusion and you can finally just dance just let it play out naturally and you're not thinking about counts or or anything. I mean, they're still there, but you're just doing the movements because that's where your foot told you to go or, you know, it's just that's what the music told you to do. And your choreographer, John. <laughs> but <laughs> it feels I feel very lucky to be an artist. Not Everyone gets to go to a job that they genuinely love every single day. And I'm in a place where that's something that I do. And I wouldn't, now that I have it, and now that I have it, I wouldn't change it for the world. It's something I'm very grateful for. Every time I walk into the door, I'm aware that I'm getting ready to do something that I love. And it was a choice that I made and it was an opportunity given to me, but I'm here because I love it. 
My favorite part of the creative process is really the very beginning. I joke with John all the time saying that it's really a three-day process for me personally. The first day I'm learning the steps and it, it looks like I hadn't stepped into a dance studio ever in my life. The second day I get a little bit more comfortable with the musicality and the coordination of the steps in general and then the third day is really my favorite. It becomes more organic and we get to have a conversation about the inspiration and motivation behind a character, a personality trait that I'm trying to portray, anything along those lines that really develop into what we're trying to show the audience in general and how I feel as a dancer and how I want the audience to feel as well. I love being an artist because we get to express ourselves in so many different ways. For me personally, it's through my movement and dancing. Also, portraying characters is one of my favorite things to do. And just kind of diving into someone else's idea, experience, story, line is really interesting and unique. And you kind of live in that moment for a period of time, and it takes you away from your everyday. My favorite part of the creative process is literally being in the studio and getting to work together. I love, love, love learning, and I love seeing what I can make my body and my mind create. How does it feel to be an artist? I don't know how it feels to not be an artist. That's the truth, <laughs> I don't know. Being able to dance is a way to express emotions and to share with the world how I'm feeling. Um, I sometimes struggle with doing that in my personal life. I hope that seeing dance and performance can inspire other people to also express themselves through whatever medium or through conversation that they would like. I think just the fact that you are performing in front of a huge group of people can be intimidating to most. To me, that's not why I find performing intimidating. I mean, sometimes that's a little intimidating, <laughs> but for the most part, for me, I think I just want to, I want to do it right. And so the thought of doing it in a way that isn't right, or I want to do it right, and I want to make myself and those around me proud. And I want to make sure that the story I'm telling is being understood. So for me, the intimidation comes from there. I'm, I'm telling myself, make sure you do this. Make sure that that story gets told and, and make sure all those little nuances are in there so that everybody watching can understand. And you know, make sure you try your hardest. Some other barriers that I would like to, I guess I would want to work on on an everyday basis to overcome is the intimidation factor within the workspace. It's not necessarily negative by any means, but ever since I was younger, I always had such an easy time performing to an audience of a couple hundred or thousand, and I didn't know who they were, I couldn't see their faces, but every day is a little bit scary to perform in front of your peers because you can see them, you know them, you probably know what they're thinking, and for whatever reason, it's just, it's a lot scarier than performing into a sea of people. For me, the biggest 
downfall of being a dancer is dealing with pain and injury. I have my whole career, and even before becoming a professional, had to deal with some injuries. So for me, just knowing when to push through and knowing when to take care of yourself has always been a battle. It's like a, a dance, not to have a pun, of being okay and still being a performer. I struggle with anxiety before performances. I practice yoga and meditation, and that is something that is deeply important to me as a performer to help me battle my butterflies, for sure. When I'm in the wings, I do this thing where I kiss my finger and then tap my shoe both sides, I have to get both sides, and if I'm really nervous, I'll do it a few times just in case. Just a little bit of extra luck, extra magic, if there's any in there. Um, that's maybe not the most graceful thing, you know, bending down to pat your shoes, or might be a little bit gross, but I have to do it. I <laughs> As a performer, the stage was my lifeblood, and I'm grateful for every moment that I got to spend on it. Now as a choreographer, seeing my work on the stage is equally as fulfilling. It was very inspiring following the three female leads in this ballet and pinpointing how they could personally relate with each of their characters. They each have a different struggle that they're trying to overcome and using their own personal history and influence was integral to creating something that was natural and believable. In Wire Walls, my character has to overcome uh, social conformity. I think everyone even those that use social media are trying to hold on to themselves within it. And that's the battle that my character is going through. It's maintaining individuality within this bubble of likeness. I can definitely relate to my character in Why Are Walls. My personality and character development really is someone who is battling with their inner self. The, the voices are, that are in their head for whatever reason um, kind of hold my character back in a sense and I tend to build up walls to create a comfort zone for myself and they keep me safe and I don't want to break them down. I guess from my own experience with overthinking a lot of things sometimes, I kind of get in my own head and that has a tendency to hold me back in some cases. And knowing that about myself, I've kind of dove deeper into that idea to kind of bring it forth within my character development of Wire Walls. My character has issues with being alone. Um, I directly have always had a little bit trouble being alone, being by myself. It's something that I struggle with. I am an extrovert and I love to be around people all the time. So it's directly relatable to me and who I am as a person. Yeah. Being a choreographer myself helps me develop roles. I, I know what it's like when you wanna to try to get something out of a dancer and I try to pay attention to the details the choreographer is giving me. And I think I'm not sure, but I think it allows me to really fine tune that skill a little more, having been on the other side. The company is sort of untraditionally traditional, if you will. So we do have a lot of full length ballets and repertory ballets um, that make up our full repertoire. Why Our Walls is very special to me and I'm very glad that it's 
the piece that we're featuring in this film project. I got the great opportunity and pleasure to work with Charleston's Poet Laureate, Marcus Amaker, on this ballet. His writing not only inspired the concept of the ballet, but his words are also used as accompaniment to three of the sections in the piece. This ballet is about boundaries and barriers. It's about how they're formed and how you break them. The male lead in this piece is acting as the three female leads' inner voice. Some of these women have good relationships with their inner voice, and some of them have very toxic relationships with their inner voice. Nonetheless, all of them are confronted with it. How they choose to deal with it is laid out on the stage. Marcus's words are biting and raw and thought-provoking, but on the other hand, they are extraordinarily hopeful. So I wish that's what the audience takes away when they see this ballet.
Even in caged darkness we are blooming, above the swift unflinching weight of time our feet dangle over the edge like children and we are still learning how to love. Before shadows attempt to erect demons on the day we are breathing and burning light. Even in the sour exile of death our skin is soft and our souls sweeten a memory. Even at this moment, a baby is born and knows what it feels like to be completely and remarkably free when your walls come down.
Because people keep saying to live each day like it's your last, but I say live like it's your first. Come out of your mind like you came out of the womb and open yourself to the beauty of unknowing. Be present in the presence. The future is now and you wrote the book, but there is no catalog of worry, no price plan for prayer, no index for indecisiveness, no glossy magazine for glory, you are here. You learn to walk without worry when questions wash over you like memories before you wake up to the answers and realize you were free all along. Free to just be and breathe instead of holding your breath for death to grab a hold of your soul and force you into another world of unknowing. People always say, live each day like it's your last. Why not live like it's your first? Redefine what it means to be beautiful. Drink wine for the first time. Grow old gracefully without collecting dust on the shelf of your mind and make a joyous sound when your walls come down.
Every moment that you are alive is the only moment that matters. The past is a glass house and we throw stones trying to shatter walls that need to come down. We are all architects of negativity, brick by brick of bold thoughts holding together, bodies bound by blood but burned by love, so we let bugs into our house. And each infestation is a manifestation of our own insecurity until the walls come down. Be aware of the model you are building. Allow enough room for God. Give Jesus the floor plan. Let Buddha have a spare key so that he may open up the blinds when you are blind to your own light. Let your home be a haven for heaven, but dig deep if the walls need to come down. People are insane, living like zombies, blindly walking, even stalking themselves, staring at computer screens that poison their pockets, claiming the key to a connection is really an infection of the mind. We are born with the breath of rhythm, yet we cut the cords of our connections and we find ourselves stuck at the intersection between freedom and ego, but which way will you go when your walls come down? I have been known to cling to clutter and sit comfortably in uncomfortable chairs. I have been known to obsess over obsessiveness. I have been known to keep friendships when they do nothing but harm. What about you? Do you sound an alarm when your foundation is on fire, or do you fan the flames long enough for five o'clock to roll around? Well, this is not happy hour. This is the time for time to not be spent counting down eight hours behind the desk of your own shadow. This is the time to free yourself from the mental cage where all ages grow to no pain. This is the time to start a new revolution where love is the solution to the troubles of the world with weapons of mass reconstruction, rebuilding houses whose walls need to come down.